Hey everybody, Rob here from Making Spirits Bright, and I have a different kind of video for you today. This video isn't a review, it's more of a discussion. Um, between the two, animatronics and inflatables, which one is best? Which one is better? Which one is the better choice for decorating for Halloween or even Christmas? So in today's video, that's what we're going to do. We're going to dive into several categories, compare the two, and then come up with a conclusion of which one is best, an animatronic or an inflatable. So join me today as we get started. Okay, so first category we're going to talk about is value. Which is a better value between an animatronic and an inflatable? So what we'll do is I'll just break down each one. I'll talk about animatronics, all the pros value-wise for them, and then I'll switch to inflatables, talk about the pros of the value for them, and then decide which one wins that category. All right. Okay, so animatronics. So value-wise, you're looking, and we're going to talk about average prices for the average consumer. So I'm going to say anywhere from about $150 up to $400 if you're talking about the Inferno skeleton or the skeleton or anything like that. But what do you get for that price? Well, a lot of times with an animatronic, you're going to get lighting, sound, movement which is pretty good, lighting, sound, and movement. The higher you go up, you're also getting a lot of size, you know, 12 foot skeleton, uh, 15 foot phantom, 12 foot inferno. So you're getting quite a bit of size, you're getting movement, you're getting quite a bit for your money. What do you get with inflatables? You get a fan, fabric, lighting, and normally that's about it. Now, where do inflatables start pricing wise? It just depends. It can be as cheap as 20 bucks all the way up as to as high as 300 or more. If you get something from say Hamaker Schlemmer, you're gonna pay you know close to $500 by the time you do shipping. But I would say average price of an inflatable is 30 to really about 200 or so for the average inflatable I, I know inflatables can go higher than that but i would say for the average inflatable that's what you're going to pay but you're just really getting fabric fan that blows in air and lighting occasionally you'll get sound occasionally you'll get short circuit technology kaleidoscope lighting but that's really about it so comparing the two animatronic versus inflatables and i'm a big fan of inflatables which one is the better value I think the nod goes to animatronics. I think you're just getting a little bit more for your money. You're getting, you know, the movement, the sound, the lighting, and a lot of times the size as well. So category one, winner, animatronics. Okay, time for category two, which is design. What gives you better designs? Do you get better designs out of animatronics? or do you get better designs out of inflatables? Well, if you think about animatronics, there's a lot of details put into the faces, the clothing of the particular animatronic. Whereas inflatables tend to be cartoonish, um, usually pretty simple. Now I would say it really depends on which year you're talking about because several years ago, Jemmy, really put i feel like more thought into the design of their inflatables now they're very very basic um a lot of repetition but I, we're going to really focus on what's available today in 2022 and the designs of inflatables just aren't as good as i feel like they could be animatronics though i feel like they are kind of it's their time that you're getting a lot more of them they're gaining in popularity. You're getting a lot of design. If we're talking about the werewolf 
for example, of 2022, you know, he's got clothing on. He obviously has details on his face, on his body, his arms. Um, a lot more thought put into the design, in my opinion, of animatronics. So when it comes down to category number two, design, between animatronics and inflatables, I think the nod goes to, once again, animatronics. And the next category, category number three, is storage. Which is easier to store? Because that's important, because most people don't have one inflatable or one animatronic, they have several. For example, in this garage behind me, there's over probably 50 inflatables, but they're stored and not super easy to see. And they don't take up a ton of room. They take up plenty of room, trust me, that's my wife, but not a ton of room. So let's look at animatronics first. So animatronics can be huge. Think of the 12 foot skeleton, how big that is, the box that it comes in, the size of that box and how tall it is when you put it together. That one is very difficult, in my opinion, to store. A lot of people, when they take it apart, sometimes they'll put it in a Christmas tree bag, whereas an inflatable can be just pushed down into a 12 by 12 by 12 box. So I feel like this one's actually a pretty simple category to decide who the winner is. This is one big pro of inflatables. They definitely win the storage war because that is a nice thing about them is you could have a 18 foot inflatable, but it can go down into a box, say the size of 18 by 18 by 18. I'm thinking of like the 18 foot Reapers, some of the 20 foot inflatables, a 20 foot Santa box is not that big that comes from at home. The animatronics I have, like I have for example, the Jack Skellington, the Sally, uh, the man-eating plant. If you take them apart, it's not too bad. I have the life-size Grinch too. If you take them apart, it's not too bad. If you leave them up, I mean, they just, they just take a lot of space. And the bigger they are, the more space they take up. So I feel category three, the winner, inflatables. Next category is durability. Which one is more durable? Which one's going to last longer? Which one's going to take you further for the money that you pay? So starting with animatronics. The biggest downfall of animatronics is that there's a lot of electronics, there's a lot of moving parts. And a lot of them are typically made for indoor use, but we tend to use them outdoor. Sometimes we'll put them outside and then bring them inside each night, which can kind of be a pain, but they're meant for displays. Most of our displays are outside. So durability wise, you know, I think if you take good care of it, it could last, you know, several years, really. The more moving parts it has, the less durable it's going to be over time. Inflatables, you really just have the lights and the fan. The cheaper inflatables, they'll say the ones that cost 30, 40 bucks with the cheap fans, do not tend to last too long. Um, it just really depends. When I have them outside, they don't last usually a year, a season or two. That's about it. But my longer inflatables, depending on how the wind has affected them, tend to last a little bit longer. So between the two, animatronics, versus inflatables when it comes to durability. I feel like this is one of the tougher categories to decide. And a lot of it I think comes down to how you take care of them. Like, are you bringing your animatronics inside? How are you storing them? Are you getting the moisture out of your inflatables before you put them in the box? I, I think it's kind of subjective to the owner on this one. So I'm actually going to call this one a tie. So for durability between animatronics and inflatables, it is a draw. And the next category is installation. Which one is easier to put together, to install, to get up and running? So animatronics versus inflatables, which one basically is the quickest to get going? 
So let's look at animatronics first. So animatronics, obviously you've got a lot more parts. Um, a lot of things you have to pop in place. Uh, some of animatronics can take as much as an hour to put together, especially the larger ones. You just have a lot more moving parts and stuff. Inflatables, not long at all. You just basically pop it out of the box, uh, plug it in and step back. So to inflate a average size inflatable, you're looking at maybe a minute, two minutes, depending on the fan that it's using. And then you just have to stake it to the ground. Animatronics, you have to put it all together um, and then plug it in and also probably stake it to the ground depending um, where you're placing it and how, how large it is. One slight advantage to animatronics is once it is put together, uh, you basically just plug it in. And that, that's really it. Unless it's one that runs on batteries or something, then it's always good to go. Um, so the winner on this one, I think this nod is going to go to inflatables. I think they are just much easier to put together to get going. Um, so yeah, so this round goes to inflatables. And the final category for the match between animatronics and inflatables is popularity, the wow factor. Which one gives you the most pop, the most bang, the most cloud, crowd pleasing attention, animatronics or inflatables? Now, I just wanna preface this by saying that I am a huge fan of inflatables, mainly because of the storage category, because I do not have the room for say 20, 30 animatronics, but I easily have the room for 20 plus inflatables. So that is why I tend to go with the inflatable side. Animatronics, however, they've got lights, they've got sound, they got moving parts, and they have really good detail, which if you have those in your yard, it's very hard for those not to just be crowd pleasers. Inflatables come in all shapes and sizes. There are some that are definitely crowd pleasers with huge wow factors, especially when it comes to um, a younger audience. 20 footers, um, a favorite character. Those are always definitely crowd pleasers. But when you're talking about Halloween, especially, I think animatronics just steal the show. And again, I'm a huge inflatable fan, but reality is animatronics steal the show when it comes to wow factor and popularity. All right, so the winner of this competition, animatronics versus inflatables, goes to, yep, you guessed it, animatronics. Again, huge inflatable fan here, but just when you look at these categories, I feel like animatronics wins more, checks more of the boxes. But honestly, it doesn't matter. Buy what you want. It's your display. It's what you like. It's what you think your audience might like who's coming to look at your display. Get what you want. Like for me, even though I can see that animatronics really pat, uh, pack a punch when it comes to certain things, for me, what works best is a good old, um, good old inflatable made by Jimmy. And hopefully Jimmy will get back around to digging a little deeper into the design up in that part of the category because I know that they can and I know that they can pop out some even better designs similar to how they used to. So all right guys different type of video again I'm Rob from Making Spirits Bright if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet please do so help me keep the channel going like comment and I'll catch you on the next one. Take care.